Hello, everyone. Welcome back. The time has finally come for us to find out what the next year of Siege has in store for us. That's right. This is the year nine reveal panel. Who's excited? I'm your host, Camille Salzar Hadaway, and it is so great to be here, not only because it's warm in Brazil, but also you bring the warmth with all of your energy. We love it. Of course, joining me as well, we have creative director Alexander Carpazes and game director Joshua Mills. Give them a round of applause. Alex, you're hearing everyone. All weekend long, Brazil has been loud. 10,000 people surrounding us, 360. How does it feel? I just want to say, Obrigado, Brazil! <laughs> We asked you to show up for the SI, and you did. This is unbelievable, and I can't wait to talk about year nine. I can't wait either, but first, Joshua, this is the first SI in Brazil. What does this moment mean for you? Oh, in one word, everything. This is our moment, not just our teams, but all of our fans and the pros. Like, this is what it's all about, coming together and celebrating everything that is amazing about Siege, and we can't Oh, man, we got to get into this stuff. I'm getting too, too antsy already. I know. This is the community, and this is for the community. So let's get into the overall vision of Year 9. So what is the Siege team focusing on in Year 9? In Year 9, we're focusing on you, your feedback. It's the foundation of our roadmap this year. We're going to see significant quality of life changes, and of course, meta shifts that are incredible that's going to keep the game fresh and fun. All right, Alex, we have the fresh and fun, but how is it going to be fair? Right. Siege is a competitive game, and making sure that we maintain that integrity is really important to us. So anti-cheat will be a main topic for us all through year nine. Also, Players have invested a lot of time into a game like Siege, and we want to be able to celebrate that. So expect season after season, more rewards and celebration for all of your progression in the game. All right, with that, I think it's time to get into the overview of the seasons in Operators. How about you? What do you think? Ready? Let's get into the overview of the seasons in Operators. So I'm going to drop a spoiler here if you missed it. Season one, Deimos. You can now be the villain we all need. you got to talk about it. All right. If you missed it yesterday, please tune in. We talked about Deimos coming into the game. He's now captured by Rainbow, but you can now actually jump into the villain's boots, play with the death marks, and as Justin said yesterday, take down operators. One by one. Ooh, he's so menacing. Look at that mask. It's really exciting that we're able to go into this realm of trying to be a little more sinister. I love it. I love it. Uh, now let's get into territory that we haven't seen yet. Season two. That's right. Season two is when we shake things up with an operator remaster of Recruit. This is something that we all began with as Siege players, and you won't be getting just one recruit, but two of them. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You just dropped the microphone there. We're getting two recruits. I have so many questions. But first, let's talk about the veteran players, because they've spent the most time with the recruits. So how is this going to help them? Well, the biggest thing here is, yes, we've been with Recruit for some time, and the thing that they're bringing to the table is an ability to inject strategy into the lineups like you've never seen before. On top of that, Recruit, they got a bit of a promotion. They now have full operator status, which means they can appear in every playlist freely, just like any other operator. Additionally, you can customize them like any other operator, their uniforms, their headgear. So then what does this mean for Battle Pass? All right, because with Operator Remasters, if you own them and everybody owns Recruit, you get these two operators for free. So when you get the Battle Pass, you'll be rewarded an Operator Voucher, which means you can turn it in for any operator you don't already have. 
And if you have every single operator, you can still turn it in for cold, hard credits. Yeah! Let those R6 credits roll, but not quite yet. Because I still have a question. This is a really cool concept, the remasters. Where did this come from, and why was it important for the team to integrate it? Well, fundamentally, it's about the health of the game. We want to make sure that everything in the game is maintained and brought forward. This is game, we, we're here to stay. We're here, Alex has said it last year on the SI, we're here for the next 10 years, and we are making sure we make that investment across the board. So keeping our ops impactful through the years. And I'll also say this gives us an opportunity for our new operators as well, letting us give more time to their abilities, making sure they're unique, they're impactful, and also it affects their loadouts making sure that we can give them even new weapons in the game. All right, TLC for operators. You gotta love that, right? Now, that seems like a lot, but we still have a couple more seasons to go, so let's get into season three. What can we expect? Season three will be a new operator coming from Greece. This is very near and dear to my heart, and so I'm very happy that we're introducing our first Greek operator into Siege. That's really cool. Uh, Joshua, I feel like you're just itching to tell us more. Yeah, I, got, I have two things. One, this operator is bringing something to the table, again, you've never before seen in Siege. And just like the big bad Deimos, this operator will be fielding a new weapon. Ooh, a new weapon, nice. All right, with that, let's get into season four. I know it's a little bit away, but you gotta tell us something. Okay, so season four, we're bringing another remaster to the game, and this one is, I guarantee you've been asking for this for a long, long time, so I'm super happy we're finally getting to it. Uh, Joshua, you gotta tell us more than that. We're not, we're not really supposed to talk about this one because it's so far in advance, but uh, this operator hails from the United States, and again, you've all been waiting for this one for a long time. Okay, uh, I appreciate that. We could see it on the roadmap, the flag, but we are here in Brazil for SI. You gotta tell us more. Who wants to hear more? This, All right. The crowd has spoken, Joshua. Yeah, going with the intimidation strategy, <laughs> very good. Okay, so to keep my job, I'm gonna say something different. On a totally unrelated note, I just want to say our cosplay community is insane. I've been incredibly inspired by the work y'all have been doing. I can hear them in the crowd. And you all bring life into our characters and you bring them to real life. And you know what? You've inspired me. I think I got to get into the game. And I'm saying with my current features, I think I, think I could cosplay season four's operator remaster. Just saying. Hmm. Oh, okay. I'll leave it at that. I don't want to get you in trouble. But I think there's a few guesses out there as well. For the overview of all the seasons, what else can we expect? Of course, you can expect a new battle pass with a new theme every single season and an event to break up that middle of the season and freshen things up. All right. Well, that's sounding pretty good. But let's dive a little deeper into player protection. What does this look like in year nine? Okay, I want to make it very clear. Forisios hackers. <laughs> and to translate that loosely, hackers have no space, cheaters have no space in a game like C. I mean, Alex, a lot of people are excited about that. So, Let's talk about what else we're going to see. So cheaters have no space in Siege, but it's also about reducing the amount of cheaters as well, right? That's right. Season one, we already announced that we're introducing new technology, machine learning, so that we can quickly and effectively make bans based off of data and statistics. This will make us a lot quicker when it comes to analyzing the complete Siege population, making sure that we identify cheaters quickly, and we're getting them out of the game as soon as possible. On top of all of this, too, yesterday we talked about the ranked playlist, making sure that there's new restrictions so that new players understand what they have to do in order to jump into it, but also making it tougher for cheaters and smurfers to jump into this playlist. 
And finally, when it comes to toxicity, this is something that we're really working on in year nine. Every single season, we'll see an update to the reputation system in the game. Sounds pretty good. I think you made it pretty clear, and everyone heard, cheaters are not welcomed in Siege, so how is it going to be harder for them? In season two, we'll be working on anti-toxicity first, and that is the release of the reputation system from beta. Right now, the system is in beta mode, so actual consequences aren't yet live. However, in season two, you will begin getting restrictions on the playlist that you can enter if you have a low reputation standing, meaning that you better be on your best behavior. Ooh, cheaters beware. Okay, let's talk about PC. That's right. Season two, we're also introducing something on the PC side. We're making it harder for cheaters to have access to multiple accounts so that if they are banned once, they stay banned and they can't jump into other accounts into the game. Sounding pretty good. I want to double back to the reputation system, specifically Mousetrap as we head into season three. What are we gonna see there with that? So Mousetrap is our console anti-cheat. It detects mouse and keyboard while you're supposed to be using controller. You asked for more punishments when players are detected by this, and we are delivering. Players detected by Mousetrap will be penalized by the reputation system. If you do something wrong there, you will lose access to certain playlists in the game. And is this just part one? Are we gonna see more with Mousetrap? We are going to see more. This is part one with part two coming the next season. What we'll be doing is making sure that if you are detected by Mousetrap, you will be automatically placed into the PC matchmaking pool so that the only players you're playing against are those with mouse and keyboard. If you're on console playing with a controller, that's the only person you should be playing against. Yep, uh, you know, you don't want to have your controllers out if, uh, you know, you're not supposed to be playing with them. So beware of Mousetrap. Let's head into season four, specifically how the season will be hammering down on cheaters. Season four, we're also making a big update. We will introduce live bans. That means as soon as a cheater is detected, even in a live match, they will be removed from that match. And that match will be canceled, not affecting experience and gets you into that next match quickly. What about anti-toxicity? So, communication is key in Siege, and it's okay to have friendly banter with the other team. However, what we don't promote and we don't allow is hate speech, sexism, or any kind of bigotry. So, we'll be stepping it up in the text chat we'll be introducing automated moderation in text chat in season four to make sure your games are fun, fair, and safe. And we're seeing a little bit of that there as well. That sounds pretty cool. A lot covered for player protection. Let's get into what you want the main takeaways to be when we think of player protection in year nine. For us, when it comes to anti-cheat and anti-toxicity, this is a year-long effort. You'll see season after season, we're investing in four main priorities. One, it's going to be about hardening our security systems, making them more resilient, making them more robust, and that means reinforcing our two technologies. Mousetrap, our console anti-cheat. We'll be updating it every single season. And QB, our PC anti-cheat, making sure it's robust, it can handle what it needs to and make the game a lot safer. And finally, when it comes to game exploits, we're stepping it up as well. We're growing our team and putting dedicated resources on game exploits so that they can be identified faster and they're eliminated as soon as possible. Sounds pretty good. Now you talked about communication. How 
frequent are we going to see that? We've been stepping up our communication already this year, and our promise to you is that we're communicating on this subject every two months. We don't want to go radio silent on this and make sure that you always have the information you need so you understand what's going on in the game at all times. All right. Well, thank you so much for that, Alex. You know what, Joshua, I'm thinking maybe we should give Alex a little bit of a break. Covered a lot there. So let's head in to balancing. Joshua, how is balancing changing in year nine? So, we, like I said, we are dedicated to some serious meta shifts. And I want to make it very clear, Alex was very clear about our player protection. I'm going to make it very clear about this. The TDM meta is not here to stay. This is not how we intend for Siege to be played. We want the run and gun out of the game. We want to get tactical, strategic, focused, methodical play to be the center stage of everyone's ranked match, just like we're seeing up here on the stage. We're hearing a lot of players really excited for that. So how is the player perspective going to be integrated in that focus? Well, there's one more thing I'd like to mention yeah. just before I get into the player's perspective okay. on that. Because actually their perspective leads into this next point. Another big focus for balancing is reinforcing our attacker lineup. Div making that divide between our attackers and our defenders far closer. Because again, strategy, teamwork, and smart play is what should be winning your rounds, not what side of the fight you're on. Yeah, and you're right. That is, a lot of players have been bringing that up. So what else is going to be brought into what you're hearing from a player? So that's the thing. We want to be able to be far more reactive to your feedback. We've actually changed a bunch of process internally so that we can do that. So we can react faster to that feedback. So you're not left waiting months and months and months for changes to come in because that can be incredibly frustrating, especially because you're all playing the game every day. Now, let's talk about, um, you know, how the communications with players, because again, you mentioned they're very integral to the process. So how is communications with players going to be clarified? So one of the big things we'd like to do is clarify the vocabulary around the game. So when it comes to the game, we have three main updates. First and foremost is a straight up update. It's a single entity, something like you can see where we take a frag grenade away from an operator and give them flashbangs or something of the like. The second one, a little more complicated, is a system update. This is something you can see when we do, say, a weapon class update. This is our shotguns we did in year eight, or even the LMGs that are coming in year nine. Last but not least is the remaster. This is by far the most complicated balancing change we can possibly do in the game, but it is integral to the health of the game, so that we make sure that your investment in our operators carries forward for all the years to come. Oh, that's really exciting. Uh, OK. Let's get into the seasons for balancing. Let's talk season one. I know a lot of you caught the season reveal, but if you didn't, here's a little refresher. Joshua, let's give it to them. OK, yeah, so season one is coming out hot. There is a lot of stuff in season one, so you got to check your loadouts, everyone. Uh, you all saw the ADS and attachment adjustment, right? Because I think some people want the Ash ACOG. I'm, I'm not sure, but. Outside of that, we also have our weapon class update. Again, this is a big thing for us, where we go in and we make sure every weapon in the game is working and versatile and has its role. So the LMGs are coming back out to play. Last but not least, the revamped shield mechanics. This is a huge one for us. I'm a little ahead of the game here, but it's a huge one for us because of the complexity of what it brings to the game. It gives that defensive stance that we see where you can have more control and definitely move around the field. Now, some of the features, you can jump through full health barricades. You can activate your gadgets behind the shield, like a cluster charge, a breach charge, or maybe later this year, an exothermic charge. Ooh, sounds good. OK, um, I want to talk about reinforcing attacker lineup, because you mentioned that. Um, you know that everyone's interested in that. How is that going to look throughout year nine? OK. So as we talk about reinforcing our attackers, it means giving them the armory they need, the tools they need to be able to take the fight that they have to do. The second side of it is going across the line over to those defenders and dealing with some powerhouses over there. So in season one, a zombie will be receiving an update. A zombie's Kiba barriers will no longer, will now have a durability on them, which means depending on the weapon caliber you're using, you'll be able to knock them down faster or slower. Additionally, this bring, is one of the first steps because we're actually going to be bringing something else in season two. 
our lovely Spooky Boy Fenrir will receive his first update. This will be removing the bulletproof off the FNAT entirely. Also removing an FNAT from his loadout and a code. Lastly, Solus. I gotta move fast here. Solus will be receiving two updates. Season two, she'll be receiving the first update, which will make this the case. Her gadget will no longer be able to be used during prep phase. Additionally, ad additionally, the range of her gadget will be reduced and the battery will drain faster. Now this is part one. Part two will come in season three and it'll bring a deeper system change, but it takes more time for that and that's why it's in season three. We have an additional operator being adjusted in season more. three, which is Dokabi. We're attacking some of the frustration around her gadget. I mean, I love how you just laid it all down there uh, with all the operators. It's so exciting. There was a lot to, you know, pack in there, but we have to also talk about season four. I know it's a little bit away, but what is the balancing focus heading into the end of the year? So the biggest thing about season four is making sure we leave space and time to the react to the needs of the community. There is a lot of stuff coming online in season one. And we want to make sure that we can be there for you as we experience this all together and we move forward together. Of course, there'll be multiple new updates throughout the seasons, lots of things we didn't cover here, so you can stay tuned to all that as well. And what else should we keep in mind uh, heading into year nine for balancing? Well, fundamentally, we know where we want to take this game and we want to be the best damn tactical shooter on the planet, period. Reckless play will not be rewarded. Methodical team-based strategy will, and that is our goal. All right, well, thank you so much for that, Joshua. I'll give both of you a break now because that all sounded really great. And you know what sounds great as well? The fact that, you know, Siege is up-leveling the competition. No, I'm not talking about SI, but a new feature that is coming to the game in year nine. For more on that, here's live content director, Christopher Budgen. We will be finalizing the maps within Quick Match 2.0, bringing the entire map roster to Quick Match. Standard will be getting new filtering so you can choose between ranked, all maps, or only the non-ranked maps as well. Within ranked, we're bringing exclusive cosmetics that you can earn every season. Siege Cup is a brand new time-gated tournament that happens every two weeks. Participation within the Siege Cup provides specific rewards, so make sure you grab your friends, squad up, Register your team, and we all know that feeling. At the end of the match, when your heart is pumping, you just need to close it out. There's going to be no other feeling like the Siege Cup. And there is no other feeling than knowing that the Siege Cup is here. Alex, I don't think anyone saw that coming. The Battle Cup is back. It is now Siege Cup, and this time, we mean it. This is the best way to experience Siege with a full stack of your teammates going up to the top of the tournament and winning those exclusive prizes. You're gonna brush up on your skills there. But you know what? Let's get a little cozy and head into player comfort and long-term progression. What is the player comfort and long-term progression philosophy in your nine? Well, ultimately, it stems from giving our players many different quality of life upgrades, making sure you have full control over your experience, and giving you more tools to take your skills to the next level. And what else does this mean for players? This also means that we are invested in rewarding players' dedication in Siege. You pour hundreds of hours into the game, and we want to return the favor. So we want to make sure that you have that long-term progression to always look forward to. Okay, with that, let's head into season one updates for player comfort and long-term progression. Uh, we already saw a bit of that in the season one reveal, but how is it really setting the tone in season one? So season one, we start immediately with the locker that I know a lot of players have been asking for. The ability to favorite your gear, the ability to look at what you just unlocked, all of this in one place, we're delivering season one. Yeah, I love the locker. I, I like keeping organized, and I think a lot of players do too, so the locker's gonna come in handy for that. But on top of the locker, we saw updates to movement. 
Yeah, so we're going through and making sure all our systems are getting that kind of health thing that we talked about with our operators, making sure that the clunkiness is removed and you have that real sense of flow. So we're looking at Repel, an iconic feature of Siege, and that entry and exit, making sure it's super smooth and feels great. It's a game feel thing. It's very hard to describe or even see in a video, but once your hands are on it, it you'll know what we're talking about. Got to get your hands on it. Uh, let's talk about gadgets. What's happening there? Okay, so we have two big things coming for the gadgets. One is improved gadget pickup. So the idea of being able to pick up a gadget once you've placed it, relocate it within the map. Number two is projectile trajectory pre-visualization. And that is the last time I'm saying that. It's called pre-vis. <laughs> so what this means is giving you full control of where your gadgets go. Again, take your skills to the next level, but at the same time, if you're already there and you don't need it, you can turn it off. I'm probably going to have it on just so I could really tighten my skills there with that. Uh, let's head in to season two for player comfort because a huge part of how you experience gaming, you're comfortable with playing the game, is knowing how you can improve and how you're performing. So how is season two going to help players on this front? We are completely revamping the after action report. This is the system where you commend your players and understand how you performed. After that, you'll see an updated screen where you can see all of your progression, all of your stats, and everything you care about in one single place, and then quickly jump into that next match. Do you have anything else to add for Season 2? Well, we're extending previs into Season 2 as well, and we're adding it to our drones. This gives you all the control you need to be able to get your drones wherever you need to get them. At the end of the day, it's about making sure that you can get the intel you need and drone survivability. Wait, there's more. Oh. Yeah, so previs, as I said, started in season one, season two, and we're actually bringing it right into season three. And what does that mean? It means bringing it to our deployable gadgets. So deployable shield, new jammers, those sort of things. Being able to get them set the first time right. Anything else for season three since you already jumped the gun there? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So a lot of us maybe go on our phone when we're waiting for our match and ranked or whatnot, but wouldn't it be nice just to jump into the shooting range? You can do that now. So in season three, you'll be able to load into the shooting range whenever you're waiting for your matches. And this includes the R6 Cup. Additionally, it seems a bunch of you like to 1v1. So we're adding it as a preset into our custom games. That's pretty cool. I will not be one being one of you because you spent a lot of time with the game, but give me some time to brush up my skills and maybe we'll talk. You mentioned rewards off the top. Are we going to see that come into play here? Absolutely. Season three is a big feature that we call badges. This is where you'll be able to earn the achievements and challenges and equip those badges as a badge of honor so that you can show them off with all of your friends. And on top of that, we're creating a new home for badges too, which is the career page. The career page is where you can see your stats, see how your last matches went, and customize which badges you equip on your profile. That's pretty cool. Okay, uh, I got to talk about matchmaking as we head into season four. How is matchmaking evolving? So in season four, we're introducing something that we call dynamic matchmaking. This is making sure we have more flexible matchmaking for players in lower population zones or in places that when you're playing and it's not peak uh, siege time, you're still getting a fair match. So if you're in Australia playing at like five o'clock in the morning, you're still getting a balanced and fair matchmaking experience. Making a lot of Aussies happy. <laughs> Let's talk about crossplay. What's coming in season four? Crossplay is the final update that we're bringing to the table, letting console players play with PC friends. It should be very important. We'll take a moment to celebrate this. But it's very important to note that this is a one-way street. PC players will not be allowed to play with console matchmaking. So now, with this set, doesn't matter what platform you're on, what console you're playing on, 
with Siege, you can always play with your friends. That's pretty cool. Who's excited for that one? Yeah, you heard the noise. Anything else to cap off player protection? When it comes to or player protection. Player comfort, sorry. Player comfort, yeah. <laughs> this is really about what you care about, what the community cares about, the quality of life improvements, everything that's rewarding. Expect us to expand on this and to grow this on the roadmap as we go along in the year based on your feedback. All right, well, thank you for that, for player comfort and long-term progression. Now, for some of you, you may be looking to maybe trade in some of your items for some cold, hard R6 credits, or maybe you're looking for some sweet throwbacks. Well, guess what? The Marketplace is where you could do all of that. And to tell us more on what the Marketplace will look like in year nine, here is Business Strategy Director, Mohammed Ben Hanada. Right now, we're aiming to launch the feature in season two. The philosophy behind the Marketplace is that we want to make sure that the feature is polished, functional, and as secure as possible. So this means that the beta is going to be running up until we feel that the feature is up to your standard and up to our standards. So for you, this means that you can still sign in through the QR code or through our website. And you can still give us your feedback in order to build this platform together. And be sure to register for the marketplace to get in on all that cool stuff. All right, now sometimes you hear training and onboarding, and you're thinking new players, but guess what? Year 9 is bringing some cool things for veteran players as well. And back again to tell us about this feature is Live Content Director Christopher Budgen. This year, we really want to focus on following up on our promise to bring the best training tools to Siege. That's why we're really going to be focusing on all of the players, making sure they have the training tools they need to be able to execute whatever strategy they intend. We're really happy with the reception of Versus AI Playlist. And that's why we want to follow it up strong in Season 1 with five new maps, new Defender AIs, and being able to play more attackers as well. And we're not stopping there. We're bringing new content in Season 2 and Season 3 as well. On top of that, we're also delivering the AI attacking playlist. That means for the first time, you'll be able to play defense and attack in an AI match. Expect AI attackers to drone, to clear roamers, and plant on site. We think this will be a great way to bring your friends into Siege. We know that map knowledge is really important. And that is why we're bringing new maps in Season 1, but also Season 2 and Season 3 as well. Map knowledge isn't the only skill you need to become a champion. And while the shooting range is a great place to warm up your aim, it's not the same as navigating through maps and clearing targets. That's why we're bringing a big update to Target Drill, where you can play for over 60 minutes with targets in every room. We have a lot of quality of life improvements coming in this update also. You can turn on headshots only, have pre-made destruction, or even turn on a mini HUD. We're also bringing damage reporting, so as you clear a room, you can see how much damage you've taken, and then you can actually know whether or not you cleared that room efficiently or not. In Season 3, we're bringing the drone drill to the map training playlist. Intel is king, and we know that finding a good hiding spot could be the difference between a win and a loss. Also in Season 3, we have a new cover mode coming to the aiming lane within the shooting range. It's a great opportunity to test with a smaller target as the target dummy takes position behind cover. In Year 9, we're not just building onboarding tools, but rather the future of training to help our current players improve their skills to perform at their best. Quite a bit there for veteran players as well. That's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, and Christopher said it really well when it comes to something like target drill we've been working with veteran players making sure that they can clear floor after floor after floor and that they get the best practice possible before they jumped into a ranked match and of course this is the best time to jump into siege as well with your friends when we bring the new versus ai online with attackers as well now we are here at si so, I mean, it only feels right to check in to what the competitive scene of Siege will look like in year nine. For more on Siege Esports, here is Esports Director Maxime Vial. We have Associate Director, Esports Live Events and Broadcast, Nelson Garcia. 
and BLAST Executive Director Christina Martel. Just a few weeks ago, we have announced some of the changes coming to BLAST R6 in Season 2024 and revealed the revamped point system to qualify to the 6th Invitational, which now puts more emphasis on team's results at the majors. And today, I'm happy to reveal one more key change. This season, we are bringing back the 6th Invitational's last chance qualifiers. We will provide more details on their formats later this year. The first major of Season 2024 will be hosted in Manchester. We're excited to host the very first major for Siege in the UK, and what better city than Manchester, where we know the crowd will create an unforgettable atmosphere for the teams up on stage. In November, we will head to Montreal, home of the Rainbow Six Siege production team. Montreal holds a special place in our hearts, and we're excited to be back. After Sao Paulo this year, we will explore fresh location in 2025. The Six Invitational will travel to the United States. Normally, this is when we drop the mic, but in early 2026, the Six Invitational will continue traveling. It is time to spread the love to Europe. We have so many amazing local communities across Europe. So deciding where to go was not easy. But guess what? I'm happy to announce that in 2026, the Six Invitational will be host on Ubisoft home turf in France. Can't wait to see you all there and make it history. There is a lot that we covered in this panel, so let's bring up the roadmap as a refresher. Look at all that stuff. A lot of things people are excited about. This is a big year for us with a lot of new features that honor the past, but also prepare us for the future. Yeah, there's a ton coming in, and it is all inspired by you. So we're really excited to bring this year to you. Now, before we go, I can't believe the panel's coming to an end already because you all have been so great. But I have to ask, what is the lasting impression you want the community to be left with heading into year nine? Joshua, let's start with you. I, I think the biggest thing is that you're heard, that we are building this game together, we've committed to doing that, and we want to listen to your feedback, and it is not only welcome, but actively encourage. So please keep giving us your feedback because this is our collective game. And as Alex said, it's a great time to get into the game. Lots of new players are joining us and the passion here in Brazil, oh my gosh, you will send ripples through this game for years to come. So again, thank you to everyone. And it's been amazing. Alex? I just want to echo what Josh said. I want to thank the entire community for all of the passion you've brought to the game. It inspires us. I also want to thank the team that works on Rainbow Six Siege as well. They pour their hearts and soul into this game, and we appreciate it. Also, I want to thank Blast for putting on the SI, hosting it in Brazil, and for all of you to show up and make it such a special moment. Year nine, is an important year for us. And it sets the stage for an important milestone. At the end of year nine, we'll be moving into our 10th year of Siege. That's a huge milestone. We're already working hard on that next step for Siege. And while we can't say anything today, I will say that this brings Siege into the future bigger and better than ever. So I want to say again, thank you so much for making this the best game in the world. I want to thank both of you for coming here and presenting everything you and the team have been working on. We really do appreciate that. And I'm really excited to get into year nine, which a reminder, year nine, season one hits the test server tomorrow. So you could try it out. Before we go, I also want to thank everyone that is watching at home. Obrigada, Brazil! It is so great to be a part of this passionate community. We love these reveals, and we can't wait to see you again. But for now, we have SI to continue. We have the live orchestra and the live